Danger, Dr. Danfield. Well, good evening, folks. This is a boy with the goods, Tom Wood, to give you blokes and pokes with jokes. It'll make you croak or laugh till you choke. Ha ha, how am I doing? <laughs> Kill you, folks. Simply gonna kill you. Dr. Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. As usual, there's an interesting case for the doctor today. We'll call it Death Tunes In at 790 Killer Cycle. <laughs> Kill me, Dan. Well, why? Imagine Dr. Danfield going to see a radio show. Oh, why not? It would be a good lesson in psychology, just to see what it is that makes people laugh. By the way, he hasn't told me yet whose show it is we're going to see. Uh, Tom Woods. Tom Woods? Oh, sure. The boy with the goods, Tom Woods. You're in. Hiya, the clacks, the stacks of cracks, the black, the smack. Oh, no, 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 Dan. <laughs> not that corny guy. Well, why not? There's psychology in corn, too, you know. Probably the most commercial stuff on the air. Well, okay. I can stand it if you can. Hmm? Hey, what are we coming in the back way for? Well, I've got tickets from the clients' booth. What's that? Well, we're going to see the show from backstage. Oh, good. I've never been in the back of one of these places before. <laughs> Here we are. Now, this is the artist entrance. Hey, Dan, there's a policeman. <laughs> He's a special policeman, I see. He's here to see that only the right people get in. Oh. You know what I mean? Uh, good evening, Mr. Stevens. Well, good evening, Dr. Danfield. I haven't seen you since you were doing that lecture program last year. Doing a guest shot tonight. Oh, no, Mr. Stevens, we just thought we'd come in and see Tom Woods' program. Oh, you ought to have something better to do than that. Oh, well, we thought we might get a few laughs. You uh, have tickets, I suppose? Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, fine. Well, it's uh, down the hall and to the left, uh, Studio D. And that's the last one down the hall. Here, I'll quick open the door for you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Stevens. Yeah, we've got a lot of better programs. Tom Woods doesn't seem to be very popular around here. Huh? You should have his paycheck every week, my dear little girl. You wouldn't care if you're popular or not. <laughs> Gee, Ben, I didn't know they had so many studios. I thought everything came out of the same one. No, indeed, Rusty. Radio is big business. Hey, Dan, that's Bing. I hear Bing. I hear Bing. I certainly he broadcast over the American Broadcasting Company. Yeah, somebody must have opened the door. Hey, come on. No, no, no. I, I'm going to listen to you. Okay, okay. Hey, you better oh, close the door. Somebody will get me. He isn't here on the phone. Oh, all All right. And this is Sunday. I thought Wednesday was Bing's day. Oh, it is. He's uh, probably doing it yesterday. Well, come on. Let's get down to Tom's studio. Oh, gee. Isn't radio wonderful? Yep. Maybe you'll appreciate it more next time you're sitting home listening in your big easy chair. George, you are a dirty lout. George, you are a dirty lout. George, you are a dirty lout. George, you are... Oh, what are you doing? Pacing up and down and waving his arms. <laughs> Yeah, he's just an actor resting for everything is possible. Out here in the hall? Sure, sure, they all do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we turn here. The stage door is down the end of the hall here. What are, what are all the other doors? Oh, well, those are dressing rooms for the stars. Gee, it's like a theater. Yep, almost. Yeah, here we are. Well, Dan, could we go in? Look up there, there's a green light over the door. It says studio on you. Oh, it's all right. They're just rehearsing. And the show is on the air, the light's red. Yeah, it'll be all right anyway. This is uh, just a sound lock. Sound lock? <laughs> Looks like a little hall to me. Well, it is. You still have to open the door in order to go out on the stage. The door on the far end. Oh, that's funny. Usually a page girl here to take us upstairs. No way, we might as well go on up. Well, I thought we were going to see the show. We are, from the clients' booth. Oh, it's up here. Got it with the control booth. There we are. Oh, this is nice. Hmm, big soft chairs. Yes, and I can see the show through that big glass. Yeah, but we can't hear it, can we? There's a band playing down there now, and I can't hear a thing. Yeah, wait a second, I'll turn on my loudspeaker. Where's this uh, Tom Wood? Oh, I don't know. Maybe in the control booth, or maybe in his dressing room. 
Uh, that's just the band rehearsing its numbers. Who's the dame, the one walking around the sound lock door? Oh, that's uh, Helen McGregor. She's Tom soloist. Hmm. Guess she's going to a dressing room. Say, how did we come here so early for anyway? The show isn't broadcast for nearly half an hour. Well, we might as well listen to the dress rehearsal, at least what's left of it. And if we don't like it, we don't have to stay. Well, why this is so stay? So why, that is. Nobody else comes in. Now, uh, Rusty, this is no place for proposing. Dan, you're a drip. Stop it! Stop it! Stop the music! What's wrong with that guy? That's Tom Wood. Helen McGregor. She's been killed. She's been murdered. In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. And now back to Michael Gunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Helen McGregor, she's been killed. She's been murdered. She's in the sound block. She's lying in the sound block. Come on, Rusty, let's get down there. Helen McGregor. Why, Dan, we just saw her a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, what's the matter? What's going on here? No. Helen's been murdered. I just came in here and... Who are you? I'm Dr. Danfield. Here, let me take a look. Just a minute. What are you doing in here? This is a broadcast studio. No, Ms. I have tickets for the client's booth. In fact, I'm a friend of the sponsor. No. Thousand pardons. I am J. Sheridan Lewis. I'm the producer of this opera. Here, here. And now, if you don't mind, I'll uh, take a look at this poor girl. Dan, there's a filing spindle. Oh. Yes, driven clear up to the base in the middle of her back. Well, one of you run and get Mr. Stevens, the special policeman out at the artist entrance. Joan, will you go, please? Yes, Mr. Lewis. Who is she? Well, she, my dear Dr. Danzy, was June Davis, one of the most excellent script girls in the radio business. Oh. I, by the way, uh, thought of all you know. Yes, yes, no doubt. You know, I wish uh, a few of you people would go back in the studio this sound like this, Robert. Uh, you, uh, fellas, musicians, back on the stage, if you please. Wouldn't hurt you to look over your music anyway. This is radio, you know. So much go on. Okay. Oh, boy. Poor child. Poor child. And uh, might I ask who you are, sir? That's the writer. Lawson Bell. Yes, I'm the writer, the poor, underpaid writer. Without me, the show could never go on. <laughs> I can hire writers a dime a dozen. It takes a producer to make the drivel you write less. Oh, drivel, is it? All night long, I sit at my typewriter, staring at blank white pages. And then, and then the words come. And what happens? A bunch of lousy actors stink them up. Well, if you're through with your mutual admiration, I might remind you there's a girl lying here who's dead, murdered with a filing spindle. Hmm? Oh, yes, poor child. Good heavens, i got to get another singer. Hey, Joan, 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 where are you? Oh, you went out to get a car. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bell, you say you're the writer? Yes, indeed. Since I took over the show, the rating went up five points. Well, I'm afraid this little event wasn't in your script. Or, uh, was it? Yeah, what do you mean, sir? I'm not writing murder mysteries. Yes, Mr. Stevens. Oh, Dr. Danfield. Uh, Miss Davis says there's been a murder. I'm afraid so, Mr. Stevens. Do uh, you want to take over? Oh, no, not me. I think the city police. Poor Miss McGregor. She was a nice little type. Then you don't mind if I go on with my investigation? Oh, no, no, indeed. I, I wish you would. Very well, thank you. Now, first of all, I want a little information. Which one of you knew Helen McGregor the best? Oh, I did. I did. I... oh you all did, huh? Then I'd better take you one at a time. You, Sheridan Lewis. Uh, Jay. Sheridan Lewis. That's the place. Very well, Jay. How well did you know Miss McGregor? Oh, by the way, Rusty, will you take some notes on this? Okay. Mr. Lewis? I know her very well. I hired her for the show. I picked her up when she was singing in a cheap nightclub. I developed her and made her into the star she was. I see. A modern Machiavelli. She must have been very grateful to you for all you did. Quite the contrary. She didn't have an ounce of appreciation in her. When I made her a star, she demanded more money of me. I who made her what she is today. I hope you're satisfied. Uh, Rusty, please. Hey, go on, Jay Sheridan. Uh, that's about the sum and substance of it. Helen McGregor was an over-aspiring, viciously ambitious, nasty little clock. 
Everybody in this entire company hates her. That, Mr. Lewis, is a dirty lie. Why do I argue? Oh, shut up. I'm the star of this show, and I can change producers just by snapping my finger. Remember that, Jay Sheridan? <laughs> well, of course. Tom, I had no idea that you didn't feel the same as the rest of us. Well, you'd better speak only for yourself. Sir, go on, Tom. Tell me more. Helen was a sweet, lovable little kid. She was a fine performer, a great artist, and we all loved her very much. That is all except our great producer here. He didn't like her because she wouldn't let his hammy direction louse up her work. Now, careful with those remarks. If I hurry, I'll quit this show flat. I'm only to remind you that I have another offer from certain Button, Benson, and Ball. Uh-huh. The only offer you'll ever get will be from our sponsor offering you a 10 years vacation with no pay. Now, if you uh, don't mind, boys, you can carry on your love feast after we've cleared up the murder. Anything more you care to tell me, Mr. Wood? Yes. Helen was a great little girl. I'll never forget how she used to smile when I'd introduce her to the audience. I'd say, here she is, folks. A pill for your ills. A thrill that will thrill with a voice that will thrill. Believe me, folks, she will fill the bill. Aha! Yes, sir, and then she'd give me a lovely smile. Well, I had as much to do with her success as Jay Sheridan here. Yeah. I wish I really did have that offer. Uh, Mr. Bell, as the writer of this show, is there anything you can add to our little character staff? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm rather inclined to go along with Jay Sheridan. I gave her beautiful lines to read. But she couldn't read one of them. No soul, no sense of time. Oh, then uh, why did you give her such beautiful lines? Because she insisted. She fancied herself a great comedian. Oh, brother, how she could muff the snapper on the gag. Ah, the audience loved it, though. I always saved the joke with one of my ad libs. For instance, I yes, remember yes, the time yes, that... Yes. Go on, Mr. Bell. Yes, and that's another thing. The way Tom Woods here played along with it. Yes, I've got a hunch. Hey, look, I can get another writer, too. Tell me, are any of you three men married? I'll say. What's that, Miss Davis? I'll say they're married, and they bring all their relatives down to see the show, and they all sit in the control booth. Every Sunday night, it looks like an Iowa convention. Jay Sheridan has six. Miss Davis, you're fired. So what? Of course, Lesson Bell isn't married, but he has the same ideas. He keeps leaning over my shoulder while I'm timing the show, breathing down my neck and sticking his nose in my ear. Yes, it is. Yes, I am. I quit. Tom Woods, why? She's always here, too. Comes down to look after his honey boy and see that he goes right home with it. Not anywhere else with Helen McGregor. Joan, you're fired. Fine, and I'll get out right now. Leave you the time to go to the dress rehearsal. And now, goodbye. Thank heavens I have got an offer from Burton Button, Vincent, and Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Hand me that script, Rusty. I don't the timing on it. Oh, good, Dan. Here you are. Hmm. Let's see. You know, the timing on this script ends where the orchestra stopped when uh, Tom here found the body. The show had been in rehearsal just uh, 13 minutes and 30 seconds. How do you know so much about radio shows? I used to do one. Now, the musical number was right after the commercial, so according to this timing, the commercial and the band number ran just about five minutes. That's right, and we always figured them to run just right. Uh -huh. Now, uh, about a minute before the body was found, Rusty and I saw Miss McGregor walk into the sound lock here, so... Uh, she had to be killed within that minute. The last minute of the band number. Why, that definitely sets the time of the murder. Yes, within a minute. So let's see where everybody was during that last fatal minute. Now, I have a theory that Miss McGregor was killed the second she stepped into the sound lot. Then the murderer left, either to have the body discovered by someone else or to discover it himself later. Well, I was, uh... Yes? I... Where were you, Mr. Wood? Uh, I... I was in my dressing room, changing my shirt. I see. And where were you, Mr. Bell? I was down in the script room, writing a new scene for the show. Woods couldn't read the beautiful scene I had, so... Yes, 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 sir. How long was the scene? About two minutes. It was two full pages of manuscript. Only two minutes? Well, it uh, took me about ten minutes to write it. Mm -hmm. When did you leave the studio? When the commercial started. I see. How about you, Mr. J. Sheridan Lewis? Where were you? I'll say, uh, why should you suspect any of us? It could have been June Davis, the script girl, just as likely. Seems to me she was in an awful hurry to get out of here. Very good point, Mr. Lewis. But uh, I'll tell you why it couldn't have been, Miss Davis. Because she had her timing marked right here on the script, clear up to and beyond the time of the murder. I'm sure that the engineer in the control booth will swear that she never left the booth. Now, uh, come on. Tell me where you were. Well, 
tell the truth, I did leave the booth. I hmm? had a few minutes during the band, and so I walked down to the end of the hall to get a drink of water. That's uh, very interesting. Uh, by the way, will you uh, lend me your stopwatch? What for? I want to take each one of you and reenact just what you say you did. I want to time your alleged movement down to a split second. Because this is one murder where seconds are going to count. In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. And now, back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Come along, Rusty. I want you to check the time with me. You bet. This room is down the hall here, past the dressing room, about 50 feet. Fine, fine. Let's uh, walk naturally there, I like you did when you came down here before. Hmm? This is script room, Dr. Danfield. Go ahead, go ahead, let's go in. Oh, uh, I wrote the new scene on that typewriter right there. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, sit down, please, will you, Bill, and type up a few lines of the new scene? Do it exactly as you did before, please. Okay. I can just close enough by the time it took you to write those two lines. Now, uh, do you have the first copy? Mm-hmm, certainly. Here you are. I just want to compare them to see that you are really writing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Identical. Now, by multiplying the time taken to write the two lines, it uh, must have taken you at least five or six minutes to do the whole job. Yeah, that's enough. I'm satisfied. Ah, great. Thank you. Well, the person who did this job couldn't have been gone from the studio that length of time. I don't know. Oh, well, I'll just keep these two copies for a bit, Bill, if you don't mind. Oh, they'll be all right. Have to use the old stuff now anyway. We won't have time to have it mimeographed. Hmm? Well, uh, come on, we'll go back to the studio. Okay. You know, this ought to give me a good plot for a screen story. Then I can tell it the pictures. I thought you didn't write murder mysteries. Yeah, well, I could punch it up with a few gags. You know, I think that's what these mystery stories need. A little comedy here and there. Most of them are too dull. I know that's a great idea. I'm going to speak to my agent about it. Yeah, 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 here we are. I see you all out in the hall. I uh, don't blame you. The body was getting a bit disgusted. Yeah, come on, Mr. Woods, you're next. Aha, Sam Woods, the boy with the goods. Yes, sir. Why don't you say you went to your dressing room? Yes, indeed. The first one right down the hall, yeah? Now, oh, wait a minute, just a second. Let me stop my watch. Yeah, all right, come on. It's uh, the star's dressing room. Always the first. Uh-huh. I uh, want you to do exactly as you did before. Don't forget I'm funny. Ah, uh-huh. uh, in here. Hiya, honey. Hi, Sprinkler. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fluffy, please. Uh, Helen McGregor has just been murdered. Oh? Thought I heard some commotion down the hall. Is that all you got to say? I make believe that I loved her when I don't. Uh, start changing your shirt, will you please, Tom? Um, you can talk while you change that. Please? Oh, I don't mind, Barry. I'm sure Tom won't. Who well, are these guys, Tom, in your agent? Oh, uh, Dr. Danfield and, uh, Miss Fairfax. He's investigating the case. Oh, cop. No, not exactly cop. I'm a psychologist. We should psychoanalyze Tom, then. Find out why he thinks he's every James young dream. Lottie, will you shut up? So McGregor's bad, huh? I wonder who she double cross. Well, Mrs. Woods, was your husband here in the dressing room from the time he came in here to change his shirt and the time he went back to the studio? You're darn right he was. Well, how about you? Did you leave? Leaving for a minute? Certainly not. Always have to tie the big lug's tie. Come here, baby, I'll do it. Ah. Right. Always as helpless as a kid. <laughs> Uh, what's all this bad blood between you and Helen McGregor, Fluffy? She's done her best to break up me and Tommy's home. I mean, did you ever stop to think that perhaps Tom helped a little? Sure he did. What do you think I come down here every show day? Certainly isn't to listen to Tom. There is stuff all day long at home. Believe me, dearie, take my advice and never marry a guy who thinks he's funny. <coughs> yeah, very interesting. Yeah, if you've changed, Tom, we'll walk back to the studio. Well, maybe now that McGregor's dead, I can stay home tonight. Now, I guess I won't leave it. I'll have to get another stringer. Yeah, come on, Tom. Yeah, uh, uh, see you in a control booth, honey. 
You know, Tom, you and your wife had better stick together. It uh, wouldn't be very hard for a good prosecuting attorney to figure out that either one of you had a very good motive for this murder. Oh, I wouldn't kill a free. And if a fluffy, well, she's nuts about me, but she wouldn't kill a gal. She'd scratch her eyes out. Well, here we are. Let's see, that uh, took exactly three minutes and 32 seconds. Ah, what does that prove? I'll let you know after Mr. J. Sheridan Lewis and I take a little walk. Uh, coming through? I don't know why I should have put up with this town fully. I have a show that's got to go on in about ten minutes. You better come along or you won't be here when it does go on. Or uh, maybe you'd rather have Mr. Stevens here prod you a bit. No, oh, all right. But Mike Bronson will hear about this. Yeah. Now, uh, according to your statement, Jay Sheridan, when the murder happened, you were out getting a drink of water. That is correct. Where? Down at the water fountain, the bar in the hall. Mm -hmm. The long hall? Yes. How are you, Jimmy? That was Jimmy Sutton. Yes, yes, I reckon. Say, you want any proof that I did come down and take a drink? You can ask Jimmy. He was taking one at the same time. Brother, when he gets hold of this, will his program be stopping? Yes, I can imagine. Uh, why didn't you use this water fountain right here? Because it's broken. Oh. You know, this murder may turn out to be a good thing after all. How can murder ever be a good thing? Well, with all the publicity we'll get, I'll bet we'll run our hoop off to at least an 18. Well, here we are at the fountain. Mm, if you'd be so kind, very soon, take a drink. Uh, huh? All right. Now we're going well back. This is all very silly. I'm doing it for your benefit, Mr. Lewis. One of you three is guilty of murder. This is the only way I can prove that two of you are innocent. Of course, you could save me a lot of trouble by confession. But I'm not... No. Go ahead, I won't raise any more. Yeah, better. Tell me, uh, did your wife have any objections to the special tutoring you gave me, Mr. Gregory? Yes, we know, women. You know she did, Dr. Dan. Uh -huh. You uh, couldn't by any chance have gotten in a bit too deeply with your protege. Uh, deep enough that to keep peace at home, you were supposed to get rid of her? My dear Dr. Dan, I am a man of the world. I have been a rock. Yes. I may play a Around, but I never allow myself to become too deeply involved in anyone. Yes, yes, I rather imagine you were that kind of a character. No, my... Oh, save it, save it. Here we are, back again. Well, that uh, concludes my little experiment, gentlemen. Oh, by the way, Lewis, uh, that took exactly three minutes. Yes, that should be about right. Now, I, uh, I've taken an exact timing of your movement since you left the control room. You, Mr. Bell, were writing a scene for the show. The time for that was between five and six minutes at the very least. Therefore, if your story is correct, it uh, would have been impossible for you to be here in the sound lock at the time of the murder. Well, thank you. Never leaves me no end. And uh, now for the boy with a good Tom Ward. Yes, sir. Well, according to your story, you were in your dressing room changing your shirt. Fortunately for you, your wife was also there, and she cooperates your tale. That time out at exactly three minutes and 32 seconds. So uh, you couldn't have been here at the time of the killing, had it? Uh, good old Fluffy. I knew she'd come in handy sometime or other. So that uh, leaves Jay Sheridan Lewis. Yes. Now, uh, according to Mr. Lewis's story, he was down at the water fountain getting a drink. That took exactly three minutes, according to the very best stopwatch. So Jay Sheridan couldn't have been in at the swaying. Yes, but... but, but, but Unless one of you is lying, none of you could have killed Helen McGregor. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. And now back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. I said that unless one of you was lying, none of you could have killed Helen McGregor. But one of you is lying. You worked this out very well, Mr. Larson, Bell. What? Me? What are you talking about? You say you don't write mystery stories, but you should. Your plot on this one was almost foolproof. All except the one thing that murderers always forget. Oh, but I couldn't have done it. I was writing my script. You said so yourself. I said you couldn't have done it if you were telling the truth. I don't know what your motive was, Bell. That'll undoubtedly come out with further investigation. But there was one little mistake you made that proves conclusively that you were lying. Well, I can't see where else. These two pieces of manuscript, Bell, the new scene you were supposed to be writing, they were written on different typewriters. That still doesn't prove... Oh, yes, it does. That and a couple of other things. Lewis couldn't have done it. He did go to the water fountain, and he has Jimmy Fiddler to back him up. 
Tom Wood did go to his dressing room to change his shirt. His wife substantiates that. But you, Mr. Ryder, went to the script room. I did write that sheet. Yes, but you wrote it last night at home on your own typewriter. Now, when I asked you to write a couple of lines of the same scene on the typewriter in the script room, you did so willingly, thinking that the time element was all I was interested in. But you didn't notice that the typewriter in the script room is an old one, with old-fashioned pica types. They don't match at all, Bill. Not one single letter. Yes, but the time. The time, of course. It only takes 20 seconds to walk from the studio down to the script room, Bill. That was plenty of time for you to kill Helen McGregor and get back to the script room before any of the others got back. You had a full minute, you know, Bill. Mr. Stevens, take him out and send him over to the police. Yeah. What's the use? Oh, Dan, I've got to say it again. So wonderful. Yes, and so isn't the stuff, what, Rusty? In this case, it trapped our murderer. Uh, Dan... Yes. By, by that same stopwatch, how long is a radio kiss? Exactly five seconds, Rusty. Come. 